We've talked a lot of, about a lot of bad news. Amen. And we're going to discuss some more bad news that they can't get away with. <laughs> but glory be to Jesus. In 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, Verse 55, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And out of the mouth of two witnesses, let every word be established. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone that loves him that begat loveth him also that's born of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is loving God that we keep his commandments. His commandments are not grievous. For whatsoever is born of God overcome the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. The whole world can't get away with this. I won't allow it. It only takes three of us and we can change it. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I will not tolerate this. Amen. 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 Oh, and one thing we needed to mention Carl, that, that uh, our, our producer brought up, up the back, the fact that the young man in Portland might not have been shot in the back. Mm, yes. But he's martyred either way because yeah. a man murdered him in cold blood. That's on right. And so sometimes really those early reporting get it wrong. Yeah. You know, and they can say that he's. Yeah, it really doesn't matter. Yeah, right. But he's, 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 he has an untimely death, that's yeah. for sure. And he was dead when he hit the ground. Yeah. I mean, he yeah. murdered him Tragic. in cold blood yeah. because of what he was and yeah. who he was and what he was doing. In Portland, that's right. That's now, right. that makes him a Christian martyr. Mm -hmm. There's another Christian martyr that I'm very passionate about. I'm passionate about his life. He was martyred because black lives matter. Mm -hmm. His name's Abraham Lincoln. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's profound. Mm -hmm. He was killed by a Southern activist murdered the, the, the most hideous kind after the war, the most terrible war we've ever had in this country. The, the worst so we've ever had. Over 600,000 Americans yeah. died in the Civil War. 600,000, mm -hmm. we can't even imagine. That's more than World War I and World War II put together. That's right. And, and when you look at the population of the United States at Back that time. Back there, there? Oh, yeah. My goodness. Yes, yes. But to catch him after the war was over, after it was all yeah. done, and his main reason for killing him, it, it's, this, this is the way it was reported. His main reason for killing him, he was afraid that, that he was going to rebuild the South and allow it back, not, and allow it back in the Union, mm -hmm. which is what his plans were. Mm -hmm. He was bitter. A bitter man. Yeah. And he shot him in the back of the head and killed him. It doesn't get any worse than no, that. No, no, that's right. He was a martyr. Martyred because yeah. black lives matter. Yeah. yeah, because black lives matter. First Republican president, the first Republicans, and this, this is the beginning of the Republican Party. Mm -hmm. That's right. The first first Republicans elected to Congress. That's right. We're black senators. Black senators. And black members, black, black members congressmen. Of, yes. 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 The first. That's right. Yeah. The first. That's right. Republican and Republican from the time of the Civil War all the way up for almost 100 years, blacks voted Republican because Republicans were the party to free slaves and the party that voted to get rid of segregation. Mm 
Yes. That was the Republican yes. Party, not the Democrat Party. That was the Republican Party that voted to get rid of segregation. We've had our history stolen from us and rewritten by these frauds in the media, these know-nothing frauds and some deliberate frauds in the media, um, taking away, stealing our history. He which testifies these things says, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, Lord Jesus, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. That's the very last of the book, and we win. Amen. <laughs> Jesus Christ of Nazareth it's wins the whole ending. deal. That's right. That's right. We're, we're there. It's a good thing. You start with the back of the book and then go that way. <laughs> and without him, we lose. Amen. Oh, there's no question we lose. Abraham Lincoln knew that. Abraham Lincoln was so burdened, as you can imagine, dealing with the Civil War. And I had, I had read materials on him, and what I had read is that when he came into the White House, he maybe wasn't necessarily a man of faith. That's he right. maybe wasn't. Yeah, but he right. had a pastor yeah. who regularly yes. came in and visited with him and prayed with him and shared the gospel with him. And Lincoln bore all of this on his shoulders to keep the country together. And it appears that Lincoln gave his heart to Jesus Christ and got on his knees mm -hmm. and was a changed man. And, and I encourage everyone to read Lincoln's second inaugural address. Oh, if you go to the yeah. Lincoln oh. Mo Memorial in Washington, D.C., chiseled in the stone in the wall is that second memorial. And I ask all of you to read it. You can't get through it without weeping. You, you read and you hear the sorrow of this burdened man, this man who was overcome by what his nation was going through. Scripture is all through his second inaugural because he felt it, it felt it in, the be in, his, in his bones. God put a godly calling on Abraham Lincoln's life to care about black yeah. lives because they mattered. They mattered. He saw, you could see it just in his word imagery. He wrote his own speeches. You could read it in his words that he understood the, the blood that had been shed, the sorrow, what this meant. Mm. He saw the mm. evil of slavery. Yeah. He could envision it. And he did everything that he could to not only get rid of it, but get rid of it and keep a country together. It's a task we can't even imagine no. how and difficult it was. Slavery is still here. Slavery is in the world. It absolutely is. It's still, yeah, it is. It's yes. still right here in the United States in the form of communist, socialist. Seeking to enslave. That's right. But they're enslaved to an idea that is a lie. That's right. Particularly young black men and women that have been lied to. Yeah. And now not, not all of them. I'm telling you what, I mean, I, I'm, I'm in touch with a, with a lot of people here. Uh, and it's, it's the, the slavery that comes from buying a lie and buying into it until you won't hear anybody else's opinion. Yeah. Bless their hearts. <sighs> well, there is, there is a blindness, but it isn't people's fault. It is a blindness that the digital media is putting out well, there. Sure it is. You know, it used to be you pick up the Dallas Morning <clears throat> News or, you know, whatever your local newspaper is, and that's how you get your news. And it isn't that way anymore. It's, I'm sure you've got a cell phone in your pocket. That's how most people read their right. news now. It's right. digital. It's mm -hmm. Facebook and it's Twitter and it's Instagram and it's um, mm -hmm. Apple News. In fact, they decide what news you see. Yeah, you don't even do. you they don't sure even do. get to decide. They decide the news you see. The news pops up on my phone. It isn't the news that I mean I read it and I read enough that I can read through the lines. Almost every single article is a lie. Yeah. It's yeah, a that's lie right. that's because right. I read so much I know the difference between truth and what a lie is. Communism enslaves the minds yes. of the people that believe it. Yes, it does. It is a deception because what, what does it tell people? Socialism is the same idea. Yes. That's not total. That's right. That's right. It's Nazi a worldview. Nazism was a national 
Socialist Party. Yes. Yeah. There's nothing new about that. No. Right. It goes all the way back to Nimrod. That's right. So this, this book talks all about it. The first wars were caused over the same thing. That's right, because there's really basically two forms of government. That's right. You have a very unique form of government that you don't see very often that God wanted for the Jewish people in Israel. He wanted to be their God. He didn't want them to have yeah. a king. Right. He wanted to be their God and directly be their God. There would have been no taxes. It was a tithe that people would pay to, so that everyone would be cared for. But that's what God's view of government ultimately was. Man is so imperfect. We just didn't go along with his plan. We weren't bright enough to see it. But the other plan is that man wants to enslave man. Yeah. That's what you're talking about. Without God. Without yeah. God. Ma yeah. Man wants to slave other men and say, hey, I want you to work for me and I don't want to give you your just wages. That's communism. That's socialism. That's Nazism. Mm -hmm. You're going to work for me. You're not going to get your just wages and you're going to do what I say you're going to do and you're only going to get what I say you're going to get. After all, I'm going to take care of you. That's right. That's the lie. I will That's take the care lie. of you. Just like Joe Biden has been saying and Kamala Harris has been saying on the presidential level, and actually the Democrat Party platform has been saying, they're calling that, that America, in a world of 7 billion people, in a world of 7 billion people, we won't have any borders. And anybody who yeah. can get here, come on in. And just by f virtue of coming in, you can have a lower middle class lifestyle. In other words, we'll give you free health care and we'll give you a free place to live and we'll give you free food and everybody come in. There's 330 million people in the United States of America. They got to pay for themselves first, their own families, their own livelihood. Is there enough money left over to pay for 7 billion people? The math doesn't work. No, out. it doesn't. The math doesn't work. That's the lie. There is nothing free. That's right. You work yeah. for it. There's no such thing That's as a free right. lunch. No, you work Somebody's for the sweat of your brow. Somebody has to pay for that. That's right. Somebody has to pay for it. That's right. And <clears throat> because of that, my mother's brother was killed in France. In World War II. In World War II. Yeah. Yeah. Because there was here as a people. Yeah. That wanted everybody everybody to be involved in the government. Everybody, we'll take care of you. We'll take care of you. Unless you're a Jew, we'll kill you. No, we don't want any Jews. And Adolf Hitler hated black people. He hated black people maybe even worse than he hated Jews. 1936 Olympics. Yeah, with Jesse Owens. <sighs> yeah, yeah. Jesse Owens could outrun a car yeah. <laughs> and Hitler wouldn't, he wouldn't acknowledge him. He wouldn't shake hands with him. Because he was a black He man. abandoned the saxophone yeah. in Germany because it was a black instrument. Wow. That's right. Satan hates everything. Everything. Isn't it interesting? God loves everyone. <laughs> Satan hates everyone. It is an exact opposite. It's exact. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. Fear comes by hearing and hearing by the lies That's right. of the devil. That's right. I want to talk about this. Yeah. The, the, this, in my viewpoint, is right up on the level of religious freedom. Mm -hmm. This president came in. Our military had been so stripped. Oh, I now, I've, I've got a, a man on our board of directors that's been a partner with this ministry since he's 18 years old. And um, one of the Air Force Academy graduate. He retired at 24 years. Largely because of the Obama administration. And of course, he's still greatly involved in 
he's in, he, he's still in government uh, stuff and everything. He, he, he gets pretty frustrated. He said, I, I, I still spend a lot of time in rooms that don't have any windows, <laughs> but he said <laughs> that I can't talk about. But he, he, he just, he's, it, everything was so screwed around backwards in the military. They didn't even have enough ammunition. No. Robbing parts. Of the, we, had, we killed a lot of soldiers. Had a lot of soldiers die. I say we killed them because the Obama administration actually killed them. Yes. The parts were worn out on helicopters and they're swapping parts uh, and scrapping. They had to go to airplane museums to get parts. Yes. Because we didn't have the parts. I was in Congress at that time and our both our Air Force and our, uh, our Army and our Navy, they went back, in the case of the Army and Navy, they, they went back to like pre-World War II levels. Mm -hmm. You couldn't believe it how eaten out it was. But Donald Trump came in, he spent over a trillion dollars. He brought our military back up. He saw from Ronald Reagan, he learned that lesson that if if you have a strong military, it's peace through strength. If you have a strong military, mm -hmm. people don't pick fights with you. So the very first thing he did is he built our military back up. And if you notice during the last three and a half years, we have not been under attack. We haven't had domestic attacks here right. in the United States, right. terror well. attacks. We haven't had to deal internationally. Now, Ron was the chief sponsor, state sponsor of terrorism since 1979 in the world. Iran has been the chief spreader of terrorism. Um, they're involved in the wars in Yemen, Syria, Iraq, Gaza, Lebanon, Indonesia, and of course against Israel. All the time when these missiles come into Israel, it's all Iran who backs them coming in. And so what did Barack Obama and Joe Biden, remember Joe Biden was the vice president, what did they do? They gave $150 billion to the chief state sponsor of terrorism yeah. in the world. All the while when Iran was rioting in the streets shouting, death, death to Israel, Israel, death, death to America. Israel. But Michelle, they promised they wouldn't use it. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> and you know how good that paper is in Iran. So he gives them $150 billion, but this, is, this was even worse. This was the kicker. They gave a little sweetener to the pot and they gave cash. What's cash used for? It's payouts for terrorism. Mm -hmm. So they put cash of American dollars, Swiss francs, euros, uh, uh, Iranian money. I mean, they, they had all, it all bundled up. They put it on pallets in a cargo plane, US, uh, US plane, and they put it then on other planes and they dropped it over the airfield in Iran to give to the Ayatollahs. The Ayatollah, by the way, wrote a book four years ago. The title of the book is, In 25 Years We Will Annihilate mm -hmm. Israel. Mm -hmm. So he published this book while Obama is coming up with this deal with Iran that he's gonna give them 150 billion and then 1.7 billion in cash. Here's the other thing Obama did. He released out of US prisons and out of the whole prison pipeline, he released 27 procurers of Iran's nuclear program because an, Iran wants to have nuclear weapons to use against Israel and the United States. It's their stated objective. Why would the Ayatollah write a book that says in 25 years we're going to annihilate Israel? So Obama enriches Iran, the chief sponsor of terrorism, who's not hiding anything, who's saying, yeah, we are going to build bombs and we are going to kill you and we're going to kill Israel. And he gives them the money. It's like, who does this? This was under Joe Biden. Now Joe Biden wants to be your president. What is the first thing that Donald Trump did? He ripped up the Iran agreement. Mm -hmm. He said, no more, it's over. And he's ramped up the sanctions on them. And now Iran is about flat on their back, which is exactly where, where we where want them to be. to be. Because it isn't the people <laughs> of Iran who are bad, it's the Ayatollahs right. who are bad. They're bad and hopefully these people can be released from their captivity in Persia, ancient Persia, modern day Iran. This is the difference between a Donald Trump and a Joe Biden, the Republican Party platform, the Democrat platform. But Donald Trump also came in saying America first. We're not going to be globalism. I'm not going to be the president of the world.
I'm going to be the president of the United States. But there's a whole group out there in Davos, Switzerland. Maybe you've heard about them. They meet twice a year. They've got this plan now. It's up on their website. Look it up. It's worldeconomicforum.org. Go there, worldeconomicforum.org. And according to the World Economic Forum, you can see it on the cover of the August issue of Forbes magazine. They call for reimagining capitalism. They want to get rid of capitalism, which is God's way for man, that all mankind has the ability to create wealth, use it, and enjoy it for his good. That's not communist way. That's not the World Economic Forum way. They want to push us toward, they have all sorts of fancy names for it, but it's essentially communism. And they want us to get rid of capitalism. You're going to see this everywhere now in the media where they want to get rid of capitalism, reimagine capitalism. In other words, get rid of it. So a couple of elites can tell the rest of us what we're going to do and what we're going to have and take away our choices from us in the future. If you're a young person, person, you want choices and you want a future and you want to hope. That's why if you go down the road of Joe Biden or the Democrat Party platform, and I'm telling you, you got to go up and down the ticket every single office that you're voting for because America's streets are paying a price because these Democrat mayors in these metropolitan cities, they have a future and a plan that they've mapped out for you. And it is a one world system of government under a communist form of government. That's the direction of Antifa. Black Lives Matter. Read their materials. Don't trust me. Read their materials and the World Economic Forum at Davos, Switzerland. Here comes uh, here comes <laughs> Donald Trump as president. He went to Davos and he gave this blistering speech. America first. You guys should all be about your countries first, too. Yeah. And he just laid it out. He's not all part of this one world order. He wants America first. Yeah. There is such a diametrically opposed difference. But that's what this whole election is about. They believe in Davos. They believe that Joe Biden will be the next president. United States. That's why if you've seen Bill Gates all over TV, you can't miss him. He's everywhere. He's all over these vaccines for COVID. So this COVID has been used as a pretext with this pandemic to force all of us into fear. When we're fearful, we're willing to change peace and, and our prosperity for security. But it's a false security. That's what Satan gives, a false security. What's that false security? A vaccine. Guess what? Bill Gates is funding all of these vaccines that are going under trial right now. He's been all over CNN saying every human being in the world is going to have to take this vaccine. Every human being in the world, Brother Copeland, you said that only 9,200 Americans died of COVID. 9,200 as of August 2020? Well, that was a CDC report. Right. That was the government's report. I I saw it on their website. That's right. So the federal government themselves admits it's 9,200 people that are dying from it. And you're telling me now I have to get a vaccine? Every single human being in the world has to get a vaccine? And and in fact, Bill Gates has said maybe not one vaccine. Maybe it'll be six times you're going to get the vaccine. Okay, now this is amazing because other reports that have been out there have said you get the vaccine, you may have to be required to have the vaccine because we're going to go to digital currency. And if you, we have digital currency, then you may not be able to get a job unless you have a digital certificate that shows you have, a, you have your vaccine. And then that's what allows you to have a job or not have a job or allows you to buy or allows you to sell. That's why it's imperative. Christians know what in the world is going on. And we have a resource for everyone who's watching today. It's called Pray, Vote, Stands. Go to PrayVoteStands.org. You can learn everything about the candidates, the platforms, where you vote, how to pray for this election. We have got to continue to pray. Be wise. Know what's going on. We don't want a one world government. We want America first. Yes, Go into do. the polls and you need yes, to vote according to yes, the Bible. We That's what we need to do. We're just saying vote according to the Bible. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Michelle Bond. Amen. Thank you, Brother Cole. Marvelous you, job. Brother. Marvelous job. We hope you enjoyed today's teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And remember, Jesus is Lord.